Eugene Butler, born circa 1849 in Royalton, New York, near Buffalo, was one of three sons to Ephraim and Rebecca Butler. In 1882, Eugene relocated to the Dakota Territory and acquired a 480-acre farm in what is now North Dakota, specifically in the city of Niagara. He chose to lead a solitary life, never marrying and adopting a reclusive lifestyle. Butler intentionally limited his interactions with neighbors and rarely ventured beyond his property, primarily leaving his farm only for essential business in nearby Laramore. To ensure the upkeep of his land during the summer months, Eugene employed farmhands. After relocating to Niagara, Eugene Butler's mental health took a troubling turn. He began experiencing hallucinations, often claiming that unseen individuals were pursuing him. Around 1906, he started engaging in nighttime horseback rides, during which he would scream loudly, frightening other local residents. Due to his disruptive behavior, Butler was eventually committed to the North Dakota State Hospital in Jamestown, where he came under the care of Dr. W.M. Hotchkiss. While at the asylum, Butler continued to exhibit his fears of the purported invisible entities and had an aversion for having his photograph taken, believing that it would somehow extract his soul. Remarkably, despite his mental condition, he displayed no violent or homicidal tendencies. Dr. A. W. Guest described Butler as a small-statured, courteous individual who had a penchant for attending hospital dances and even developed a deep infatuation with one of the nurses. Tragically, Eugene Butler passed away on October 22, 1913, while still institutionalized at the asylum. His remains were transported to Middleport, New York, where his relatives laid him to rest. After Eugene Butler's passing, his estate underwent division among his surviving relatives, a process facilitated by W.E. Hopped. In 1915, two years following Butler's demise, laborers were dispatched to the farm with the intent of renovating it. Among the workers was Leo Verblin, who, while excavating a cellar beneath the house, made a startling discovery human skeletons buried near the foundation. All of these remains exhibited signs of skull injuries, most likely inflicted by a sharp implement, and at least two of them had suffered leg fractures. Initially, a theory emerged that five of the bodies belonged to a family, potentially housekeepers, and their children. However, no one in the vicinity could recall a family ever disappearing in the county, and it was subsequently ruled out that these remains belonged to Butler's relatives as he would have likely murdered them upon entering the property. Subsequent investigations by the police revealed that all the skeletons were those of young men, including one aged between 15 and 18, and another with a crooked nose. Authorities struggled to identify these individuals and suggested they may have been vagrants employed as farmhands by Butler, which would explain why their disappearances had gone unnoticed. It is suspected that Butler may have killed these men under the belief that they intended to steal money from his home, as he had a significant amount of money lying around. Notably, there were no traces of clothing found, indicating that the bodies had been buried unclothed and that Butler might have incinerated their clothing. To conceal the bodies, Butler constructed a trap door by removing three stones from the foundation of his house, subsequently utilizing black soil and red clay subsoil to cover the burial sites. Following this gruesome discovery, numerous curious onlookers visited the farm to observe the crime scene. Deputies collected the aged bones of the victims in a box, which was then transported to Art Turner's office. Unfortunately, it was later revealed that some of the bones had been pilfered, likely by souvenir hunters. Even now, the victims of Butler's crimes remain nameless and unidentified. Forensic anthropologist Phoebe Stubblefield suggested that contemporary DNA techniques could potentially be employed to establish their identities should the remains be recovered by authorities or returned by those who took them unlawfully. In 2016, the Grand Forks County Sheriff's Department made a public appeal seeking fresh leads given that the old case records had either been destroyed or misplaced.